Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition, episode number 34 of the Lab Epstein Hitting Podcast. My name is Jim, and joining me is my friend, co-host, former coach, professional evaluator, mentor, I think, of mine. I think that's fair to say, too. We can add that into the tagline. And, of course, successful business owner, Jake Epstein, sporting his The Lab shirt that we talked about last week on the show, promoting. That's right. Yeah. We got new sweatshirts coming, too, man. We got got all kinds of new stuff we've been working on this week. Okay. Fancy sweatshirts. Very good. Yeah. We'll do a whole episode on them. Good. (laughs) Uh, We... Well... Maybe that could be our quote-unquote throwaway episode in the new year. <laughs> Sometime in April when we're – or like June or something when we're busy with the draft, we can uh, do a throwaway and just talk about your gear for an hour. That's it. Perfect. Happy Hanukkah, by the way. Um, Thank you. And uh, it's the holiday season. Happy holidays to everybody out there listening who celebrates Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, whatever. Um, uh, I want to know before we get started here – what are you going you told me off air you're going home to eat some some jewish food that's uh, right what is, what's the so italians like myself uh, and you know my father mm-hmm. um we like fish on on christmas oh the christmas eve mm-hmm. what's so what is a jewish type food tradition that your family does every year so you for hanukkah and- yeah for her, and jamie you know she's just been thrown into the, the epstein name poor kid <laughs> uh, <laughs> my irish wife <laughs> but she likes the food so that's good yeah so you know our you know hanukkah hanukkah dinner is 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 a roast brisket and uh latkes you know potato pancakes okay. yeah always always that and some people like do cookies and and whatnot for for Hanukkah, but yeah, we always do a brisket. And brisket usually is not good. Like brisket is like a not a good piece of meat. You gotta cook the heck out of it. Hmm. But interesting as as having a father that had a barbecue restaurant, Big Mike, you know the Super Jew. I guess we can say that because it's Hanukkah now. <laughs> the Super Jew had a, had a um, a barbecue restaurant, so. You know, we when we would buy brisket, we'd buy a whole brisket, like a pack of brisket. So those things are like 14 pounds. Mm-hmm. And there's just a ton of fat. There's two different pieces. So we actually do our our Jewish brisket out of that same cut, and it's like phenomenal. It's yeah. so good. It's almost like braised beef. Like oh, wow. like short, like short ribs. Kind of tastes okay. like short ribs. I do like so ribs. we do that. And then uh potato pancakes like that. I mean, who doesn't like you know hash browns with onion flavor? I mean, that's kind of right. what it is. So um yeah so that that's what we do it's uh you don't feel real good the next day Mm -hmm. you got to sweat all that out yeah you gotta sweat it out especially if you mix it with some really bad jewish wine which we never do but there's only bad jewish wine there's no good jewish wine. i gotta tell you i didn't know this and please don't take offense to it i didn't know there was such thing as jewish wine oh yeah yeah it's uh manischewitz manischewitz it's terrible it's got a come on you were in college mad dog you know mad dog 2020 no, I, I didn't drink wine you had in a bad. You had a bad college. It wasn't a wine. It was just something that just was cheap and you, you would make you feel like a college student. Anyway. I, I think you're dating yeah. yourself by saying that, by the way. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, the old Mad Dog 2020. Yeah, it's uh, – I, I don't know why it's a thing. I, I don't – but it was it, – oh, it's kosher, right? So it, okay. it's kosher wine. Essentially, that's what makes it – so you can have it uh, you know, with your kosher meal. The rabbi blessed it, and he obviously didn't know what good wine was when he blessed it because he could have blessed any wine that tasted a lot better than what's out there. There was a an energy drink when I was in college that was it was an energy drink mixed with alcohol that we used to drink. <laughs> so that was like mm-hmm. your version of what you just said there, whatever that was that that drink where you said uh, Mad Dog, Mad Dog twenty twenty, right. Mad Dog yeah. twenty twenty. I only had it one time since this yeah. is our story episode. That's right. Mm-hmm. I probably shouldn't be saying that. I was 21 at the time. I was in college. Yeah. And we had an early morning Saturday practice. Uh oh. And um, do you want to save this we... story for later in the episode, or you want to? Yeah, we could save this. Story. No, well, I'll say it now because I'll forget. All and right, go ahead. Apparently, it was a good idea. It was like it was like the theme. You know how they had like Edward Forty Hands. Remember Edward Forty Hands, right? You duct tape the forties to your hands and 
you can't right. go to the bathroom and say, this is a great episode we got going. Anyway. I thought you were t- I thought you were t- referring to Edward Scissorhands starring Johnny. Uh, what's his it, name? It, Well, that's the idea, but it's Edward 40 hands where you duct gotcha. tape two forties and you can't, you can't go to the bathroom, right? You got 40 stuck here. So, so it was mad gotcha. dog, uh, 2020 night, whatever. And, and it wasn't even a late night. I'll tell you what, we had an early morning inner squad. That was the worst game I ever caught. I mean, why do you remember? I don't know how many games I caught in my life. I was uh, terrible. I had to catch our nastiest guy. Yeah. I must have had five pass balls in the first two innings. Sinkers I just couldn't get to. Yeah. Oh, it was awful. Go on, uh-huh. and I get shoot out too. Yeah. And everyone just laughed because they knew right. it was Mad Dog Night, right? The coach. And you were just, twenty. Well, you were twenty-one, so you were a junior. 20, so it wasn't yes. like um. I don't want to say like it wasn't like um. It wasn't a hazing. It, it wasn't anything. initiation, right? Right. Yeah, it was somebody's idea. I had never had the stuff before, but it was it was god awful. You were you were uh you were a big time. Uh, well, I, I'm I'm blowing up your spot here. You you were a uh, you were quite the how do I put it? Um, I don't want to say partier, but uh, good time. You were quite the good time in college, weren't you? That was a good time. Yeah, we had a good time in college. Yeah, same good four. time. We were, I mean, uh, there were guys that had way better times than I did, hmm. but. Yeah. Well, you were getting drafted, I, you know. But yeah, I I was, uh, yeah, I, you know. You got it's funny. You got I mean, I did stupid. I did, yeah, I did stupid things too, but nothing that, uh, yeah, you know. nothing, nothing out of the, nothing too crazy. Nothing too crazy. Yeah. No, I tried to be good. I was a guy, and and my wife still gives me a hard time because we met in college. That I, I always, if I had a game the next day, like I wouldn't go out. Okay. Like there's there's no way like we wouldn't even go out to dinner. It was like no, I gotta have eight hours of sleep. Mm-hmm. Like this is non negotiable. And she was okay with that. She just thought it was ridiculous. And to this day, she still busts my chops like about it. Like oh, I gotta get my sleep. I like to right. sleep. Yeah. I can't function on short sleep. So th- yeah. So all these years later, three kids later, and she still busts your bust your chops about. Yeah. It. Yeah. 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 Speaking, I, it's time yeah. for bed. Uh, speaking of which, by the way, are you the type of fan? I had a friend like this growing up who had a father who was Catholic and a mother who was mm-hmm. Jewish. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still talk to him, actually. We went to grade school together. Uh, do you are you the type of family that celebrates Hanukkah and Christmas or is it just strictly Hanukkah? Oh, no, we do everything. OK, yeah, we do. We do. We do everything. We have we have a tree. Mm-hmm. Uh uh, we have uh, the the menorah. We light mm-hmm. the candles. The kids really don't know. They know the prayer because I say the prayer. Mm-hmm. I say the prayer because my dad said the prayer. You know, it's just kind of something you do. Okay. And we laugh at the Hebrew because mm-hmm. they can't pronounce it very well. <laughs> they didn't re- grow up with any of that. So yeah, we we celebrate both. We love everyone in the Epstein household. We yes. love. Uh, I actually went to Catholic school for two years in high school. So. Really? I know all kinds. Of, yeah, I own the Old Testament stuff too. Now, why did you? Now, why years. did you? Why did you go to Catholic school? I'm curious. I was a troubled youth. No, uh, <laughs> I, I. It was a great school, Santa Margarita High School. It was brand new high school, Santa Margarita, California. Um, I had some buddies going there. They had a they had a, a good baseball program. The the school I was supposed to go to yeah. had a huge drug problem at oh, the time. Okay. Um, okay. At least that was the rumor. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had, I had, you know, I had friends that would, that went there too. So yeah, it was right. just, they, they thought that would be, uh, they thought that would be a good thing for me. And it, it was a great school, um, until instead of a like drug problem of, uh, marijuana, it was a cocaine problem. Wow. Yeah. That's so good. that's what, no, that's what you get at oh. the, uh, at the, you know, the high, the high, you know, sometimes when there's more money, there's, uh, mm. there's more, more drugs. So. Uh, you can't escape apparently. that stuff. Yeah. You have to. You have to be a good person, right? And you have to surround yourself with good people. And that's you know what we try to tell our kids. Yeah. Um, and if you, you were and if you didn't yeah. do that, if you were bad, if you had bad behavior, Big Mike would take in those big hands and oh, oof, oof. throwing you around like no other. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. and then one of my daughters goes to a, a private school, and my littlest one went to a. a you know, a Christian preschool. So we, we try to immerse ourselves in as much different, sure. you know, religious yeah, sure. uh, beliefs and ideas that, you know, someone, someone's greater than us. That's kind of our, our deal. We don't know who it is. Mm-hmm. There's a deity out we're, there. Though. We're confused. We're confused yeah. as all can be, mm-hmm. but we know there's somebody greater than us. Right. 
Right. So you do you do pray and you do believe that there's somebody guiding us, some some entity, some deity up yep. in the sky or somewhere spiritually around us. Yes, we're, we're we are more the spiritual people. Or we, we uh, nothing wrong with that, and it's great. No, I had a chance to meet. Did I tell you I met Tim Tebow a few years ago? Yeah, he's no. he's, he's very spiritual. I, we've talked right. about him on the show and his swing, but I like Tebow. I like Tebow. Um, well, we got off, well, a good, a good start to the episode with your stories or one story. Yeah. Yeah. Wild We're digging deep into the uh, vault of high school. Uh, big Mike used to take his hands if he had to, to you. My dad used to take spoons to me. You know, my daddy's <laughs> Italian. So and that's, what, that's what his mother, my grandmother, she took a, we used to take wooden spoons to his head and used to hit him. It leaves a little knot. Yeah, It does. Yeah. yeah, that'll leave a mark. Yeah, as it um, should. So you remember. Could I let me shift to baseball here really quickly? I found a game this week, and I want all my listen, all of my yeah, excuse me, our listeners, excuse me. There's a uh-huh. Freudian Freudian <laughs> slip. There you go. <laughs> uh, I want all of our listeners to check out baseballsavant.com. By the way, and for the listeners out there, if you haven't checked out that episode, we did a whole. Remember that episode? We did a whole mm-hmm. episode, and yeah, it was a good. It was a good one. Yeah. It was a really good one. I said about every episode, but that one was was top notch. Um. Anyway, there's new. I don't know if you know this. There's games though on Baseball Savant. Did you know that? There's like uh-huh. a, there's games you can play on Baseball Savant, and one of the games you can play is a pitch. I forget the exact name, so so I apologize. But it's a pitch recognition game. So what you do is they give you the the computer system gives you sixteen or seventeen pitches maybe, and it shows the camera, the camera view from behind the pitcher, and you are to guess and recognize what those pitches are. So pitch recognition, pitch type. Uh, I was playing that game this week, but not from the batter's view, from like not the center field camera, from view. the center field camera view, okay. which makes it a little bit harder. Well, I was playing this week, and I played literally. I found time to play every night, like for like five minutes every day. It's 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 addicting. I loved it. I got a, I I I didn't get below eighty three percent correct rate i got 100 percent, 17 out of 17 twice but i just want to say that it's really hard it huh. gets to be really it's hard to tell it, it, it's i think it's easier when you're behind the plate but when yeah. you're when you're watching from a center field camera it's really really kind of hard hmm. yeah it's oh, hard to differentiate I, between I, sinker and cutter at and times sometimes i I, I, you know, make fun of the people in the booth too when I'm watching the game, and they're like, "Oh, he missed with the breaking ball," and I'm like, "I don't want the breaking ball." Right. You know but what that, that was is? Usually, that was usually Harry Carey late in the game. Yeah. You know what that? I, I think mean, that is though. A co- I think that's a cover for they don't know what pitch it really is. If it's a curve or slider, mm-hmm. and they can't differentiate, so they say, "Oh, it's just a breaking ball," and I'll get away with that. Breaking ball. Breaking ball is easy, but it was 92. That's the problem. <laughs> from, from the right side are we uh, because if it's i mean it's a power sinker it's a kevin it's a, brown sinker yeah my god um oh i was going where going somewhere with with, with this by the way um i i, I gotta ask you and uh, i have it written down here so so um some notes of course um there are certain pitches that i think are tough to for players to differentiate and they can look at scouting reports all day and they can look at data all day and that's that's mm-hmm. fine i understand that but at times, those pitches, even watching on video, they're tough to differentiate between, say, a sinker and a cutter. That's the those are the two ones that I kind of struggled with the most. I think the ones I got wrong the most. I can differentiate between a slider and curve. For me, that's actually fairly easy because there's certain cues that a pitcher gives away that tells mm-hmm. you if it's a curve or slider. So, how if players get confused by that in the on deck circle or watching video, pregame prep, batting practice? How can they go about differentiating those pitches when a guy throws, say, a sinker and even a, you know, a, a sinker that looks like a cutter paired with a four seam fastball and at times really tunneling it that gets hitters off balance? How can they differentiate that? Yeah, I remember we played a kid from, well, he was a man, but uh, Florida, University of Florida. And I remember watching his scouter, big, tall right hander. Um, I, I don't remember his name, but it, it, his fastball was just a cutter. Like he didn't throw a, a straight fastball. So yeah. he had like a, he had like a cutter and then he had a slider that just moved more and was four or five miles an hour less. And then he had like a change up to go with it. So, 
typically you just do your homework, right? We know, yeah. we know what this guy throws. Like we're not sitting in the on deck circle. I mean, when you're 10 or 12 or 13 or 14, you might be sitting in the on deck circle going, geez, I don't even know what this guy throws, mm-hmm. which would be bad. If you're in high school, you do need to at least watch them warm up between innings, you know, right. and yeah. see, but you know, at the higher levels, you have video on everybody. So you have an idea of what he's doing and what part of the plate he's trying to go to. So sometimes you can, you can feel a catcher back there move. Um, you know, if he's moving away, you pretty much know anything away is going to be a cutter. Like mm-hmm. if he throws a cutter and a four seam fastball, he's probably only throwing his four seam fastball in. Yeah. And okay. that cutter is going to be away. So he's probably not going to throw a four seam fastball to the outer part of the plate. He probably uses that four seam fastball to come in and come Are you talking up. about so, right handed batters? With a right handed okay. hitter, yeah, yeah. And a right handed and a right handed pitcher. So yeah. um you know, with a left-handed hitter, I don't even know. I just lefties just mind mind blowing athletes. You know, doesn't, right. doesn't make sense. But That's no, right. with a you know, with a with a right hander again, he's going to spot that to that side of the plate. You know, he's going to throw his four seam fastball away, or he's going to run the cutter in. Because if he tries to run that cutter on the outside part of the plate, it'll come right back towards the middle. Sure. Okay. Unless he's really good. Unless he's really good and he can start it off the plate, but that, that's very difficult. He's not going to do that unless it's, you know, a two strike situation. So the key is to have an idea of what they're doing ahead of time. Um, yeah. If you're facing somebody that is that good, then they're that good for a reason and they're on TV. So the reason you had trouble picking it up, you know, on, on yeah. TV is because that dude was awesome, you know, and, and right. you're typically not going to see that as much at the, at the, at the younger level. So at that level, when you're older, now all of a sudden your scouting report is five, six, seven pages, maybe, you know, and you got 30 yeah. different videos of watching him throw and you can prepare a little bit more, but yeah. it comes down to the same thing. If a pitcher makes a good pitch, you're going to lose. It's just that simple. Like you need to, you need to get the mistake. And if you get that one mistake and you hit it for extra bases, it doesn't matter if he throws a nasty cutter or a nasty sinker or whatever. You need to be in a position and have a swing that will destroy that mistake. But well, I'm thinking of Carlos Martinez, where his sinker looks like a it looks like a cutter because it's almost rising. Why does why do some sinkers get that? Dis- why do pitches? I may, uh, it's a tough question. Uh, why do some pitches get the distinction of a sinker when they look like they're actually rising up in the zone and not? actually sinking in other words they don't look like a bowling, they don't look like a bowling <laughs> right. ball coming to the plate for a hitter yeah. and you know and then i don't and, know i mean i mean a sinker <laughs> should sink a sinker right. should have vertical drop so they might just call it a high spin fastball they mm. might call that a sinker but the reason it doesn't sink is because it's it's got a high spin rate okay if it was a true sinker and had a high spin rate it would tail and drop more mm-hmm. so I, I don't know if it's necessarily a sinker because guys how hard does he throw i mean he's 90 97 he's, and 99 yeah right, yeah yeah right so but isn't that a high really, spin rate that's a high spin that's rate. a very high spin yeah. rate but it's not a sinker you know he, right. he might anything four seasons on a sinker anything i mean if he's three quarter and he's throwing 90 92 that's gonna sink but if you're throwing that hard it's it's a it's a power mover like it might tail a little bit, but it's not gonna it's not gonna sink because that yeah. spin rate and that speed and the amount of pine tar and resin they put on the ball is not gonna allow that ball to sink. Yeah. So the then the sinker and so does does a sinker have a higher spin rate than a two seam fastball? It's just a different access. No, a two seam okay. fastball should be similar to a sinker. A sinker is yeah. typically just thrown from a different arm slot. Okay. So and it, 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 so the axis of the ball is turned more to like two o'clock. Right. So right. it's going to spin at two o'clock and then tail down and in where if it's that axis is more 1230 or one o'clock more vertical, then it's not going to sink as much, but it right. might run. Right. So then because the arm slot for, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, the arm slot for a two seam fastball is a little bit, it's closer to higher three quarter because it's a taller usually it's a taller guy coming down the mound with more downhill mm-hmm. movement with the two seam mm-hmm. fastball so they, that's a higher mm-hmm. arm that's high i'm i'm kind of i'm doing the audience can't see i'm doing yeah. it for you though uh, it's a higher three quarter i guess if you're looking at my face his delivery is probably what again i'm using my right hand so i'm mm-hmm. left-handed but i'm using my right so 11 o'clock we'll say mm-hmm. arm slot high three quarter arm slot for a two seam fastball with the downhill movement correct that, that has, guy yeah 
Yeah. And that's, you know, again, he's putting more pressure on his, on his index finger to try to, you know, make that yeah. thing kind of push down and in to the right side of the plate. Right. So yeah, with a cutter, yeah. you have a lower arm slot is what I'm trying to say. Usually a lot of guys mm. do I've noticed or no, because I'm starting to notice yeah. more guys coming up that have that have that very high arm slot and they're very downhill, tall guys coming downhill with that two seam fastball. That's old school. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. I'm not a pigeon guy, but I would say, you know, if, if you're a three quarter guy throwing a cutter, it's probably going to be a slider. Yeah. So okay. like Mariano yeah. Rivera is Mr. Cutter, right? And mm-hmm. you know, he was, he was up top, you know, it's just the cutter just is more pressure on a, on a middle finger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So you're still throwing it hard like a fastball, but it's just more pressure on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. They're hard to hit. Cutters are the worst because there's, you don't see the spin. The spin's not drastically different. Like a slider, you can see a, you know, if the lighting's good or your eyes are good, you can see a circle or a dot, yeah. you know, a breaking ball, you know, you can see like a, 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 maybe a different arm action or a different release point or a different, uh, I would say the jerk of the, the jerk of the wrist too, the jerk of the wrist. Right. That gives it yeah. away. You might see a blur there or a finger. Sometimes guys have their finger off the ball when they throw yeah. it and you can see like a random, um, but a cutter is like fastball. And then all of a sudden it ain't there anymore. It's, it's a similar speed and it's breaking late. It's not breaking out of the hand. It's breaking, you know, usually within that 10 to 12 foot window from home plate. Yeah. And I, I mean, that is the toughest, toughest pitch. I, like when Kershaw started throwing that years ago to get in on right-handed hitters, mm-hmm. you know, he's got his big breaking ball, which is just, you know, nobody else throws anything like that. And he's not overpowering you know, with his fastball, but for him to be able to get into right-handed hitters with that cutter, that's still at like 90, 92 miles an hour is, I mean, that made him, made him even better um, against players that normally, Hey, I'm just going to take away that breaking ball. Yeah. He's not going to be able to get a fastball in on me hard enough, but now all of a sudden he gets a fastball that's moving late. That makes it really tough. Yeah. You mentioned that the, the speaking of the curveballs, and I mean, we've talked about this before though. Pitchers are so good nowadays. It's, it's incredible. Curveballs and sliders are becoming almost one at times. I, and I think if people who look at pitches can't always, like you mentioned before that announcers are in the booth are always wrong saying, Oh, it's a breaking ball. And I gave you the explanation mm-hmm. why it's because they can't really, I don't think they can really tell between a, a lot of times between a curveball and slider anymore. You know, Domingo Herman, for example, I mean, his curveball is in the low eighties has excellent shape to it. Strasburg to a lesser extent, mm-hmm. but you, some people would say, well, that's a slider in reality. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's a curveball. If you watch their wrist action the, and mm-hmm. you watch their finger and you watch mm-hmm. the telltale signs of what a curveball is, it's just thrown really well. Yeah, guys. Uh, and then you, you throw, um, you know, Scherzer in there, right? He's more of a oh, wipeout yeah. slider, you yeah. know, different. And he's a guy that, you know, he turns his sinker over and really runs that fastball into righties. And then that big devastating slider, like it's when guys can command and make balls move like that, it's, it's, it's tough, but, but now it's somewhat shifting right now. Yeah. You have guys that are upper nineties and they're just riding high fastballs with high spin rates that guys are swinging under. And then they try to throw a power curveball out of that same arm slot. Uh, and that's old school. That's like, uh, you know, 1960s and before that was the game, yeah. you know, Drysdale, that was Drysdale, like, mm-hmm. you know, over the top hard and then a 12 to six curveball. Um, and again, that's, uh, we've had episodes where we've talked about how the game changes, the hitters catch up and then the pitchers figure something else out and then hitters finally catch up and then exactly. they go back and it's just the cycle that will continue. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly right. All right. Um, we got to do a break here. So what do you want to talk about? I'm going to give you the choice on the air here. Talk about we, those sweatshirts. Is that what you, you want to talk about? We can I'm talk about kidding. the sweatshirts. We can talk about the shirts. We can talk about the hats. The shirts. I, oh, the hats are like, they're like sold out. We can talk about. I'm People love wait, the hats. I'm still waiting for mine in the mail. We can talk about. I have. <laughs> are, you, are you still at that same address? <laughs> We can talk about, yeah, right. I got a new batch coming. I got a new batch coming. My New Jersey, my old New Jersey. There you go. We could um, talk about the winter camps that are happening as well. We are, yeah, yeah. So that's probably the the best thing. I come back uh, to the lab 
and we have our uh, we got like college prep so we got a bunch of we got some Southie we got a couple of kids from Florida I think three kids from Florida very good coming out for that because um because the weather's no good in Florida in no. uh you know in late December so it was 45 degrees on on Wednesday Oh, that must have felt so good. It did. I love wearing I my people freaked out. People oh, freaked man, I love it. Yeah, so, yeah, December 27th, 28th, 29th, 30th, we got four days, three hours a day, uh, advanced high school and college player uh, training. So we're getting, we're getting people prepped for the season. We got to get you back, get prepared to make a team. Some people had a good fall. Some people... Our freshmen and didn't make a travel spot. Some people were sophomores didn't make a travel spot. You still got 25 at bats to prove yourself before the season starts. That's what we're prepping for. We, we want guys that, you know, maybe the upperclassmen uh, decided to just chill out over break, be cool, go to the beach, mm-hmm. party it up a little bit. Play that Johnny game that you did. Well, that's yeah, you know. Mad Dog. Mad Dog. Drink yeah. some Mad Dog over the yeah. over the break. <laughs> and you come in, you've been hitting velocity and spin. Oh, man, it's time to take jobs. That's the best part about being an underdog, man, taking somebody's job. Yeah. So anyway, that's Great. what we're prepping for. So we do. I think we have maybe three maybe three spots in both baseball and softball um, that are left. So if you're, if you're waiting it out, better get on it. Mm-hmm. I agree. And the way you get on it is by logging on to the labbcs.com or call. You like that segue, don't you? 979-985-4462. There you go. Again, I'll do it one more time. 979-985-4462. Sign up for the winter camps today or tomorrow or the next day. But hurry up because it's, it's coming soon. That's right. We had another person sign up today. Can you imagine when I'm going to sign up one day, I'm going to be signing up for those winter camps one day. <laughs> Can you imagine that? We have a well, little. Is it going to be you or is it going to be like a, a little terrible? Yeah, it won't be. Around. Well, it won't be. Well, it won't be me. Okay, thank God. No, you don't need. You me. never know. Some people, when they get old, they they still think they can do it. No, no, it won't be me. It'll be a little yeah. little one though. Okay, good. Someday. So you're. That means you're stuck with me for a long time. Whether I'll like have the hat not. waiting for you. That's right. I'll still be <laughs> still be asking for that. Still be waiting for the for damn that. hat. <laughs> <laughs> um oh don't forget to like and subscribe everybody to the podcast new episodes every monday at 9 a.m eastern time the show is available well people probably know by now right we're on 34 episodes in apple google spotify tune in radio pandora and our youtube page is up and running the lab epstein hitting podcast for archive episodes and clips and be sure to follow us on social media at jim tara at epstein hitting on twitter and instagram and check us out um on the Epstein hitting Facebook page for the uh, mechanical breakdown series uh, as well. If you list, go back and listen to those uh, and Jimbo podcast, 21 uh, at gmail.com is our email address. Um, episode 34 of the fastest growing hitting podcast on the market. Yes. Oh, we like it. We're growing. I wonder if people will know that we're, we're filming this one late night on a Friday. Well, they'll know now. So <laughs> I've, if, as they're listening, say I listen, I, if I want to listen to, I, I, maybe I'm weird, but I subscribe to the podcast as well. Right. And I, and I listen and sometimes I'll put it on in the car. I'll listen on the, you know, on the blue or whatever, the Apple car play and I'll listen to it. And it sounds like we're doing it like right then at 9am in the morning on Monday. I know. I'm sorry. We can edit that out. Yeah. But I don't want you to edit out the fact that you said the Apple CarPlay. You're like a 60, 65-year-old man. Wow. The Apple CarPlay. You put it on the little walkie-talkie <laughs> that comes through your speaker. That's like something my dad would say. The Apple CarPlay. Uh, All right, I'm going to tell him. My um, my dad just bought a uh, – no, 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 um, people are going to roll their eyes at me saying this. And you may too. My dad just bought a – my mom let him buy a new Lexus. 2019 right. yeah that's good um it's a uh i saw it and it's a very uh floridary floridary <laughs> i don't know type car <laughs> I, I get it and um but it's a 2019 so right. i i saw some pictures from inside mm-hmm. and uh to your point 
about me saying the Apple CarPlay. Ha- that mm-hmm. Lexus has a lot of gadgets and buttons to it. Right. I'm not sure I'm comfortable with all that. A lot of buttons. Remember the, remember the Seinfeld tip calculator? Yeah. Remember that episode? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Put it into the tip calculator. <laughs> Hey, um, whatchamacallit, it's coming up soon. Um, um, the Christmas episode, what's it called? I watch it every year and I can't. Oh, were you airing Festivus. The fe- no, Festivus. yeah, the Festivus, Festivus episode. for the rest of us, yes. Yeah. What is that thing called? The poll, the grievance poll? Or- Gre- yeah. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah. yeah, that's a good, that's good to keep. <laughs> Festivus. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so uh, t- before we get to the stories, uh, I mean, we're, we're rolling along here. Uh, we do have a listener question, so we'll get to that first. Oh, okay. um, and uh, so we'll get this out of the way. And the question, not that we want to, we appreciate the questions, but kind of how the episode is structured today or, you know, tonight as we're recording it, as you so graciously yeah. said, <laughs> spoiled it for everybody. Uh, surprise. I'm traveling. I'm traveling. I can't tape it the other days. I'm yeah. traveling. So it's an excuse. We usually tape it. Monday morning, right before it airs. Exactly. I mean, right when it airs, it's it's live. It's live. Yeah, it's live. Uh, it, this question comes to us from Jimbo Podcast Twenty One at Gmail dot com. It's from Bill, a loyal listener of the show. Uh, he's emailed us before, and uh, Bill says, "Jim and Jake, I'm listening to recent podcasts, and it seems that Jake has taken to teaching swing fundamentals that work for a particular hitter." Are there absolutes of hitting anymore or is hitting all relative teach whatever works, whether or not it conforms to a set of standards? I believe that Charlie Lau had 10 absolutes and Jake's father narrowed it down to five. What would be the new age? He said that in quotations. What would be the new age hitting absolutes? And that is from Bill. And thank you, Bill. We appreciate that question. We have 463 absolutes that yes. we look for now. Um, Where, where'd you come up with that number? That it's a, a good number, isn't it? It's random a good number. number. Yeah. Uh, 463. 463. The, the, there are checkpoints, you know, for every player that I analyze, whether it's the players at the lab this week. So we had a couple eight-year-olds in there. Uh, whether they were part of the college group or the high school group or whether it was the – well, geez, I looked at probably close to, I don't know, 50 or 60 international players, mm-hmm. you know, this week sure. as well. And there's absolutely absolutes, if there's a better way to say that. And it typically, what I always tell people, and, and my dad told me this, was from heel plant to contact, or from what I like to, I like to go a little bit further, from heel plant to power V position, there are certain things you have to do at heel plant in your launch position. You better create torque and separation. Mm -hmm. So that was Ted Williams, right? You know, Mm -hmm. you got to create torque. Um, So your hands have to launch from a certain height. If it's too low, it doesn't work. If it's too high, it doesn't work. I I have a player here in Texas that's so talented and he just, I've never seen anybody launch their hands from that. high. He launches them from like above his ear. Um, So that's an absolute that he breaks. Um, A player has to once once the weight shift is done and once they're in their launch position, they have to stabilize their axis of rotation. If they continue to drift forward, they're out. You know, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't play at the next level. So I would consider that an absolute. Now, sometimes we get fooled, yeah. right? But I'm talking about, you know, on pitches that we're, we're trying to hit well. The other thing is we, we can't have the, you know, the barrel swing away from our body too soon. So that mm-hmm. would be considered like casting that, that, so there's, there's different checkpoints and I cover the, I don't know, I could go on for three days because this is like our certification training. So there's, sure. there's yeah, the, yeah. the launch position, there's mm-hmm. the short approach, which most of my guys know people have to fit into that. The regular approach, which the bat is parallel to home plate or parallel to the pitch. They have to be in a certain position there. And then they're, you know, from, from that approach all the way through to your power V position, you got to fit in. So there's absolutely. And, and what, what I teach and what, my dad taught was everybody has their own personal style, their own personal rhythm, how they move, how they step, how they stand. But from launch to the power V position or mm-hmm. launch to right after contact, Willie Mays is going to look very, very similar to Mike Trout. Yeah. You know, maybe one of them will have better extension, you know, but those absolutes, they're, they're going to stay inside the ball. 
they're going to, you know, create torque and separation and they're going to be on the plane of the pitch. So I guess if there's absolutes, I'm still in the, the three absolutes my dad talked about. Yeah. Create torque, stay inside the ball and be on plane with the pitch. But that's about as, as simple as you can get to it. The problem is there's a lot of different ways to get there. And yeah. my job as an instructor is to find the easiest way for that said player. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, I was going to say that, and I'm surmising here, but if you have too many absolutes as a hitting instructor, not you, but I'm saying if a hitting uh-huh. instructor out there is too many absolutes, I think they're boxing themselves in a little bit and they are hurting themselves as an instructor. They're hurting their players from reaching their true potential and they're hurting themselves as hitting instructors from reaching their true potential as well, because they're sticking to just so many absolutes and they're not getting to know the player. They're not communicating to the player. And we've talked about a lot on this show about the cues that you use. And you just said three absolutes and you said there are different ways to get to those absolutes. And that's, I'm going to ask you here. It's based off the cues that you might use, right? I mean, we talked about it last week, I think, or maybe it was the week before where you told one guy to swing completely up and you told another guy the opposite of getting on top of the baseball again those were cues different different certainly that were used to get to those absolutes that's exactly well that's what it is i'm trying to get this guy on the plane of the pitch on the largest collision course possible with that pitch one guy said swing down one guy said swinging up Mm -hmm. one guy said you got to rotate your body more one guy said oh my gosh don't rotate your body try to keep your chest you know facing the opposite batter's box right I mean silly silly things that normally you wouldn't think of but that's what makes that player fit into that mold from launch launch to extension and that's what we're trying to do so if you just say um, people would say oh uh, you need to be on plane of the pitch you know but there's a lot of different ways to, to think about that oh okay well how much is that well everybody teaches swing up now but yeah. guys swing up at 15 to 25 degrees sometimes well there's not a pitch in baseball that drops that much so that's not on plane of the pitch well mm-hmm. I'm on plane of the pitch right at this point here uh, that, that doesn't work so within those absolutes everybody also has their own opinion yeah, yeah. To how they teach. And that's what makes this game so great, you know, to each their own. What gets the most out of your player? Like I take mm-hmm. pride in not confusing people with how I speak with mm-hmm. different words and um, uh, what's the word acronyms, you know, so jargon. Hitting. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, look how smart I am. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I want my players to be like, hey, that's my player. Look at that guy. He's got three hits today. Yeah. I didn't use any like thirty dollar words. Yeah, because Cal cool. State Fullerton, we we you know, maybe five. I was six, uh, I was told by a scout friend uh, of mine one time. He said to me, "Don't uh, when you're doing scouting reports, these, these the big words. Don't try to show off how smart you are. Just paint a picture." And I guess I'm mm-hmm. that's the same thing. I'm assuming with what you just said there with coaching. Just oh my god, have you looked on Twitter? Uh, unfortunately i mean i i don't yes. even I, I mean, I'm a pretty <laughs> i'm a pretty knowledgeable hitting person yeah that you know works at it and studied and has logged a lot of hours yeah ten thousand probably and i'm not being probably, facetious, probably. facetious when i say that and i look at things and i'm like i don't have any idea what that guy's talking about yeah i have no i have no idea this guy's got twenty thousand followers i don't know what he's saying right here like the, yeah. those, did he make those words up? Yeah. How is that going to help a hitter? Yeah. And then I watch him hit off a tee and I'm like, oh, <laughs> with a, with a ball under his arm and a PVC pipe around his neck and he's on a balance board and he's swiveling his hips and I'm on like, a basu ball, right? Right. And it's like, and, and for, hey, we got basu balls, right. But we use it for different things, you know, but I'm like, geez, I, yeah, I, I don't know how that's going to like, that's not a smooth move. Like that's You're a jerky you're going to hurt yourself. Know. And then I boot up my computer and I download my list, you know, of, of all the international prospects that are the best damn players in their country. Yeah. And their socks don't match. Their shoes don't match. Their yeah. bats got like screws in it. And yeah. it's like, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't think that's where it is. Those fancy words and all that stuff. Do you ever feel, I, 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 I don't know. This is kind of a stupid question, but uh do you ever there are feel... no stupid questions jim just stupid people that ask questions that's a myth there are stupid questions <laughs> there really are stupid questions 
Uh, do you ever feel like, do you ever, I don't know. I, I, when I would, when I would used to see like hitting Twitter and see things about hitting on Twitter, I, I almost feel like stupider because I wasn't using these big words. You know, do you ever right. feel like that urge to, because you see all these people using these big words out there and they have the 20,000 followers and they're, they've got PVC yeah. pipes around their neck. Do you ever feel a need to like use these big words? Or you're just kind of like, you know what, I'm going to stick to my base, which has worked. And it still is working by the way. Yeah. I mean, no, I, I don't. I, yeah, I don't. And, and I try to learn from other people too. So, you know, I try to, you know, like, I mean, there's really smart people out there. And that have good ideas. And I'm like, oh, I like, you know, I, I get what they're doing here. And yeah. hmm, I could, you know, okay, I like that move. I like yeah. this move. So there's different pieces that work for what I'm trying to do. But yeah, no, I don't try to be someone I'm not. Yeah. You know, yeah, I exactly. guess that's the, the best way to put it. Yeah. Best way to be in life. Right? Yeah. Be who you are. Did you, you mentioned collision before? And I, it got me yeah. thinking uh, of when you were a catcher. And this yeah. was, you were catching, I'm not trying to date you here, but you were catching or date your age. I mean, you, you, you weren't catching in the time where they were protecting catchers as they are now with all mm-hmm. the collisions at the plate. Yeah. Right. You have any stories of when you were catching in college or pro ball, when you got collided into and your bell absolutely got rung. I've always wondered what that felt like. Yeah. Uh, and I remember it. Right. So yeah. it's, it's the one time I, I got taken out and mm-hmm. no, it didn't. Ha- I didn't catch a pro ball. Uh, I caught in college, but I, I don't think I ever got leveled in college. Mm-hmm. But I was playing in an 18 U tournament, I think. And it was the God, we were so good. Mm-hmm. This team, this was the team with Eric Chavez and Eric Munson and Barry Zito was on it. Uh, Ty Wigington, Nick Punto. I mean, we had like six big leaguers Mm -hmm. uh, that were on this team and so we go into Colorado to play we were in San Diego at the time we go into Colorado to play uh, Cherry Creek which Cherry Creek is like you know they run the state of Colorado or they did back then right so Josh Bard was on that team Um, uh, what was the other guy's name Darnell McDonald was on that team Darnell Mm -hmm. was uh, you know he was a big leaguer too Mm -hmm. and so we go and play and mm -hmm. and so this was like you know, and, and everybody wants to beat us because we had won a couple national championships before, right? So we go to this game, and I can, I mean, I can still see the game. And it was, uh, you know, we're playing the game. And before whatever the rules were, the umpire or, or the coaches came back and said, hey, Ep, you, they can take you out. Mm-hmm. Like, there's, it's open rules. So, you know, make sure you keep your mask on. Yeah. All right. I mean, somebody's probably told me that before. Bruce Bochy told me always to keep my mask on. So yeah. anybody I ever teach cats, I tell them to keep their. And mask. politicians are saying that nowadays too. In 2020, <laughs> there you go. Just, hey, just keep your mask on. The world. Just keep the mask safe. on, and the You're world will keep fine. turning. That's what I should do. Just roll in with a, an old school catcher's mask. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you should I, you should uh, make Epstein hitting uh, the lab um, uh, mask. Mask. We yeah. should. We could put some with the sweatshirts. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So anyway, first inning, uh, I don't know, whatever. Guy gets on, you know, gets a, get first base, and then somebody hits a double. And so Eric Chavez goes out to take the cutoff, you know, in, in, in left shallow left field because there's a play at the plate. So I, I'm getting ready, right? And he comes up and throws, and he, he throws it, and he doesn't get on top of it, so it rolls up the line. So here comes old Jake, you know going up the line to catch the ball. And I'll tell you what, I got hit and I didn't know where I was. I got hit. My mask went one way, glove went the other way. Oh yeah. I mean, I probably blacked out. Like, I don't remember. I remember getting off the ground and I couldn't breathe. Like the guy knocked the living crap out of me. Right. So I gathering all my supplies slowly. I walk out to the mound, you know, and you know, my, I think my dad comes out to the mound, like, you all right. You know where you are? I'm like, I don't know. I don't have any idea where I am. I was like, well, all right, well, can you finish the inning? Sure. So sure enough, <laughs> next inning, I'm pissed, right? Yeah. Like I've regained consciousness and I am pissed. So I get on somehow I'm on second base and I'm like, I don't care what happens. This catcher isn't going to know what he's not going to know what area code he's in. Yeah. And so sure enough, Somebody gets a base hit, and I probably the fastest I ever ran. I'm running full steam, and there is no way I am going to slide. No yeah. chance whatsoever. 
And so I'm barreling down and kind of leaning forward and the son of a gun. I'll never forget. It was Josh Bard. I played against him in college like a year or two later. He just sidestepped me. There was no, there like, wasn't a play at the plate, you know? I mean, there, you know, he was expecting yeah. a play at the plate, but then at the last minute, he just like, I was that close to drilling him. Yeah. Anyway, I don't even know what happened. I think I stepped on home plate so hard that I slipped. <laughs> and then I hurt myself again. I'm like, yeah. God, this is like the worst day ever. So, so yeah, you had a con- was, you probably had a concussion. I guarantee I had a concussion. Yeah. I mean, I I don't remember I don't remember getting up. Yeah. What was the I club? I remember being out at the pitching mound and and uh being like, oh, I can't breathe like Yeah. I got the wind knocked out of me. But what I don't was know the, how I got What there. was the clubhouse ribbing like that night? Or did anybody, anybody, anybody really notice? Yeah, anyway. No, I don't remember. Yeah. I think we I think we lost we lost that game. Mm-hmm. Nobody cared because we had the area code game. So, you know, the big showcase was sure. the next week or something. So yeah. everyone's like, eh, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, no, no, no big, uh, no big crazy clubhouse. I think the the funniest clubhouse, well, it was funny to me, was my first day of uh, pro ball. Yeah. And so I'm in, I fly in late to uh, Montana, Butte, Montana. And it's, you know, a bumpy ride and I'm all sick and some guy or some random dude just picks me up at the airport and I go, okay, here's the couch you're going to sleep on tonight. Minor leagues were quite glorious in early 2000s. Yeah. And so anyway, I, I don't sleep at all. Right. And then the next day is, is the game. So I don't think I played the first game. You know, they give you all your stuff and you just kind of go out there and work out and, you know, do whatever and then, you know, whatever. So the game was over. And so the game's over. We go in the clubhouse and I'm sitting in my locker and I'm getting undressed and I go and grab a towel and I go to walk in the shower. It's just a big open room, right? I mean, it's, it's not glamorous at all. A big open room with probably, you know, 10 spigots or something in there. And I walk in there or I walk to go get in this giant, you know, into the shower room and there's like, you know, 20 Dominicans in there and the only the Dominicans are in there. Yeah. And they're throwing soap and they're hitting people with towels and they're yelling and laughing and screaming and doing some other stuff. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm in like, I don't even know what's going on. Right. It's my first day. I look in there and I'm like, what is, what is going on? Like, are people showering or is it like an amusement park in there? <laughs> and this, our big closer turns around. Nobody knows me. I don't know anybody yet. Right? He turns around and says, he looks me right in the eye. He can see the fear in my eye. And he says, hey, man, don't be scared. That's all he said. Don't be scared. Because he could see the fear in my eye. And I'll never forget uh, a buddy of mine comes up. He played, I think he played at News from Dartmouth. And he comes in, he's like, he's like, Jake, don't go in there right now. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't go in there. He's like, just look. Let those guys finish. They're going to have fun. Let them finish and then go in and shower. And then that was the whole season was don't be scared. Yeah. That guy spoke no English, but every time that sucker saw me, he would just laugh and say, Hey man, don't be scared. It's, and that was uh, the greatest. Yeah. It was awesome. It reminds me of yeah. uh, a player last in 2019 shortstop at the advanced day level, Kevin Vicuña. I, I absolutely love the kid. He would, he would, refer, he spoke good English too, but he yeah. would refer to me always, every time he knew my name, but he would always refer to me as sir. So he'd scream every time I walked <laughs> near him or in the room, sir. And he would just, sorry, I have a mic pop. That was loud, <laughs> sir. And he would just, I, I asked him one day, I said, why, why, why do you call me, sir? You don't, I don't have any authority. You don't have to call me that. I, I'm, you know, I'm on player relations. I, you know, so, um, you go, he goes, he just looks at me and kind of shrugs. I, I don't know. Oh, well, I said, you know, you know, my, you know, you know, my name, Jim. Okay. So why don't you just call me that? I like, sir. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, <laughs> stick with sir. So six months out of the year, he yes. called me, sir. And then I saw him in that spring training awesome. in 2020 prior to the, the, uh, season or whatever being shut down mm-hmm. spring training being shut down. And that's when he called me Jim or Jim. Oh, so he, he went, Jim. You mean? he didn't call me, sir. Oh, but those are the good, you know, when you always have those, <laughs> you know, I remember my dad, yeah, Kevin's a good egg. Yeah. We'd go to like, uh, you know, old timers games. Yeah. And again, I didn't know what my dad did. Cause I was born about three years after he retired. So 
we lived on a ranch and then all of a sudden we randomly started going to these old timers games, you know, and mm -hmm. he'd meet all these people and they'd have all these stories and they'd call them by all these, you know, weird nicknames and, oh my God, like I, I, I couldn't keep up. And yeah. it was just that, you know, it was that, it's that camaraderie that you have. And that's what I tell all my players. Like if you just have a chance to play anywhere, yeah. you have a chance to play in college. I don't care if it's D six. I don't care if it's junior college. I don't care what it is. You find a place to play. Those are going to be your friends for life, you know, and those experience, you get to travel all over the country and maybe the world sometimes, and maybe you'll make it and probably won't, but you know, the stories you'll be able to tell and the people you'll, you'll be able to know in different parts of the country is, you know, is, is fantastic. So, um, I always tell those guys because it, it really is in baseball. I would say hockey. I've heard some wonderful hockey stories and hockey, the hockey guys, they, they do it. I would say the hockey and the baseball guys, the, the locker rooms are, are fairly similar. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, there was, you know, a lot of, a lot of good hazing that goes on. There was one, I can say this cause it didn't happen to me and it, it wasn't at any of the schools where I worked. It was a hockey. It was a, it was a hockey. My buddy that played collegiate hockey said, they would uh, on bus trips they would uh, take all the freshmen and they would they would put them in the uh bathroom on the bus yeah like all of them like all what are there five of them they'd stack <laughs> them all in there yeah without their clothes and they couldn't come out until they all got their clothes back on yeah <laughs> and they would just <laughs> lock them in there <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what's flying around in that in that bathroom at that time, but uh, yeah, I mean that's yeah. Most of the stuff is. Uh, I do remember one one story my dad told me once. I think they were in Cleveland, and somebody somebody fell asleep with a cigarette. Did I tell this story on the air? Did no. I tell this one. My so my dad's coming back from like dinner or drinks or something. It's, you know, it's like whatever, one in the morning, two in the morning, something like that after a game and. They're walking down the street and all of a sudden a flaming mattress comes flying out of like the hotel window, <laughs> you know, like the 15th story and lands right in the middle of the street. And anyway, they look up, it was one of their, somebody fell asleep with a cigarette in their hand. Oh like God. they passed out with a cigarette. And my dad said that happened all the time. Like people would, they would, you know, they smoked back then. Yeah. Yeah. And they would, their mattresses would catch on fire. and People would die all the time. Sure enough, just open the window and throw it, throw it out of the window. Yeah. Except Cleveland. For, I mean, it makes yeah. sense in Cleveland. You, you can't you can't do that in Vegas. You can't throw matches. You can't open the windows in Vegas. Can't open the windows in Vegas. <laughs> Probably, yeah, you, that um, that story you met, um, when you mentioned uh, D six in high, when I was in high school. This <laughs> I was playing on a Legion team, and I I was a fresh uh, I was a freshman playing on the senior legion team so i was playing with sophomores juniors and seniors so i was the youngest one on the team and there was a kid who wasn't very good as a senior and but he was going to play d3 somewhere small d3 school mm -hmm. <laughs> and one of this it's so mean one of, one of the kids who was a junior <laughs> he said where he was going and the junior says what is what's that d4 <laughs> He had no idea. He had no just, idea where it was. And he's no, like, oh. he's <laughs> probably serious. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. Well, no. The kid was. He was. Being, he was being facetious. He was, he was being a jerk. Yeah. He was being. A jerk. What's that? D four? <laughs> just to bust the uh, kids. Just the kids' chops. Oh god. And there are. You know. Oh, you got to have god. thick skin. We actually had last night, or well, I don't know what happened there. We had a new kid start today. High school kid, really good. Yeah. And one of my college guys was back and daniel's awesome uh daniel goes uh oh i can't remember what college he goes to but this this is a dude like this guy is he can play his, ca his calves are like that big oh, wow. i mean he's just in the nicest kid right yeah. like but i mean he is thick he hits balls front toss like 103 miles an hour oh, oh like my he's God. just strong sure. and explosive and it, he's thick but he's like old school thick he's not like in the gym all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. he works out, but he's not, you know, it's not that. So, you know, I haven't seen him in whatever four months. And he rolls in today with like a semi fro and 30% lamb chops that he's starting to grow. Oh my God. Oh, and I was God. like, I was like, this is the, this is the greatest look I think I've ever seen. Yeah. So I showed him 
I, I showed him um, Dick Allen. Dick Allen passed away. Right. So he kind of has this Dick Allen look, right? With the, he just doesn't have Dick, Dick Allen's glasses, but he's got kind of these big, you know, bushy lamb chop sideburns. And then the fro sticking out. So I changed his profile picture, of course, you know, so everyone can see it. Now he looks, people think he's Dick Allen when he logs into, you know, the lab. So anyway, there's this new kid and it's like, I don't even, I don't know him yet, you know, and I don't know what I did, but I totally busted his chops. I never even met the kid before. And, and, uh, Daniel, Dick, Daniel, Dick Allen, you know, says, Oh, you're going to have to get used to F. He's just a prick to everybody. But I'm like, I'm, I'm really a nice person, but that's just the way baseball is. And, and so everybody, like, it was great. There's a new kid. Yeah. You know, he didn't know anybody in the group. And by the end, everybody's right. We called him Johnny Lawrence because he had blonde hair. Mm-hmm. And we call him Johnny Lawrence from the Karate Kid, the blonde guy. Yeah. And so by the end of the night, this, this kid knew absolutely nobody in this group. And everyone's like, See you later, Johnny at the end of the night and that's what sports and that's like what baseball is, is all about it's you know you do have to have thick skin and, and listen if this kid if, if i busted his chops and he turned into a you know like a turtle and just you know got into his shell then i would have treated him different but he was yeah, like of course you know, he's a young high school kid and he's like i'm with it and all of a sudden you know he became part of kind of our our community so that's the, the great thing about sports and and the girls, we had a, a, a softball class and after, and one of the girls was in, in, in college that came back and she just needed some reps. And then the other girls were like in high school. And, and again, by the time we're all done, we're competing. They did a home run derby against each other and the 13 year old won. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. That 13 year old, that was like the greatest, greatest night of her life. So I don't know. I always like my own kids. I mean, you got to do something, right? You have to have that camaraderie. And even if you go to college and you join a sorority or you join a fraternity, mm-hmm you know, be smart about it, but it's, that's a big part of life is, is having a a good group of people that you can share experiences with. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any good experiences uh, with clubhouse managers? Any funny stories with any crazy clubhouse (laughs) managers? Um, I guess I'll go back to, to, to Butte. Um, He quit. So I, (laughs) we had the worst, (laughs) part about the clubhouse manager is that he quit so we're there this is the worst town in america this is the worst place no i shouldn't say town the town's uh, buttes all right okay but okay the 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 team right the the team whoever owned the team it was like the worst minor league i think it was voted worst minor league affiliate did they get any good did they get any good crowds no, we had John Rocker night. John Rocker night was pretty great where they gave away like uh, buy one, get one free beers. No, we did not have good crowds. Okay. They were, they were typically old toothless people. Okay. Um, not there's anything wrong was, with being were, toothless, but no, or old for that matter. Yeah. Like there's, you know, they were just, yeah. but it wasn't like a, it wasn't a cool thing to do. Let's go to the game. It was like the, all these people wanted to do was yell at somebody. Right. And it was typically us because we weren't very good. Yeah. So when we get to this park, this park was so bad that it was, it was the football stadium at the, uh, what, what Montana tech, the ore diggers. I don't know what that is. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, or they, they dug ore, right. But it was a big copper town. And so there's a college there and apparently a football field and the baseball field was part of that. It's terrible like rocks every day we would like filter rocks out of the infield like the rocks wow. you know that were like you know the size of a quarter all over the bat right. hops so you know we you know i get there i'm there for a week after a week our uh our grounds crew guy quits he's out <laughs> and so now we have to do the grounds crew and then our clubhouse guy quits a couple of days after that not that he was great it was like you know our spread was bananas and uh peanut butter and jelly and white bread that's like that was our spread but half like as soon as he quit you know what our laundry looked like it just got thrown in the middle of the room yeah and you had to go sort your own laundry wow so you did the grounds crew and and the, basically the clubhouse somebody did the grounds crew i don't i don't know who it was me i mean but i you, may have raked, raked first base like i wasn't gonna do the grounds crew stuff like but i don't you had, i don't know but it was terrible yeah we had to we we did break out rocks in our position because we're like i don't want a bad hop so we'd get there early and try to get the rocks out of the field they just multiplied they're like cockroaches yeah so (laughs) and so you so basically you guys were your own clubhouse managers yeah we didn't even have a clubhouse manager 
that's oh how God. great it was but it did save us you know whatever a couple hundred bucks a month we have to pay right. dues. yeah yeah but yeah. you know i mean you're sitting there next you know you're here's your here's your laundry right yeah i don't, I don't even know where the laundry gets done or who does the laundry but my laundry is sitting on this other guy mm-hmm. and this other guy i think has crabs yeah oh god you know what i mean like yeah. i don't want my stuff anywhere near this guy's stuff yeah and it's just laying in the middle of the floor next to this guy oh it was it was bad how was the how was, was the clubhouse was it nice no, it was terrible. Yeah, it was ter- It was all terrible, Jim. Yeah. It was so bad we didn't even have fitted hats. This really? We were the only team that had adjustable hats, and they find our owner because pro baseball you can't have adjustable hats. <laughs> <laughs> it was it. That was the last so, year of Butte. The Copper Kings were were non-existent after that year. So that, they got wow. rid. They lost their franchise. So yeah, that's they, they, wow. That's that was it was pro. pro that was pro that ball was pro in a ball. nutshell. It was. It was. It was. Uh, yeah, it was not not glamorous. No. Um, wow. But it call it our college guys were great. I will yeah. say that. Like the the Missouri Clubhouse guy is great. Uh, Fullerton, God, I wish I could remember his name. He was mm-hmm. great. I think he was Hawaiian, and yeah. he was like just always upbeat and the happiest dude ever. And and we didn't have much at Fullerton. You know, it was like you know we had metal lockers and like it wasn't a right. it wasn't a pretty thing. But we we got it done. He always he always hooked us up because we at least had nike stuff um yeah yeah no uh, you know i guess the one of the fun things about fullerton what people don't know is, is how many national championships that we won well not me personally but the 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 school won w- without a clubhouse without mm-hmm. a locker room we used to get dressed in the parking lot yeah i mean that's yeah. people think yeah, Cal State fullerton yeah. like these guys are the greatest you know blah 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 great team whatever with it no, we had a parking lot, and everyone would get their laundry in the PE building. Yeah, I'm not that old, people. Like, yeah. I mean, come on, this was in the 2000s, right? We would pick up our laundry, we'd go in the parking lot, we'd change, and then we we'd walk into practice and beat everybody's ass. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, UCLA would come in with their five different uniforms, and yeah, they're really nice buses, and yeah. then we just you guys throttle had, them. What two uniforms, one bus? Yeah, gray, gray and white, gray and white. Stripes. Gray and white. I uh, the, yeah. When I was in um, independent ball, when I started my career, we had a clubhouse manager. Still a friend of mine, by the way. I still talk to him. I talked to him a couple of weeks ago. And uh, boy, don't get him started on politics. Mm-hmm. And um, he, the way he would laugh, he would he would start by he would laugh. He would start by shrugging his shoulders. So I don't know how, let me fix my camera here so you can see. He would go like this. He would start, he, oh, he, 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 he'd, he'd go, he'd go. <laughs> and then he, <laughs> but he would do that for like a minute. <laughs> and then he'd start laughing or he'd go, he'd go like this. He'd go, ah, <laughs> he just, that's how he would laugh. And the, my first year in independent ball, he had a, he was the clubhouse manager for the home side. He had, a guy, I'll say his name, Bradley, his who who uh, was working with him. Not the not my friend, but Bradley, who's working with mm-hmm. him. And Bradley was a, a little uh, heavy set, we'll say. Mm-hmm. And any, I would used to be in there late at night with those two, just you know, chatting it up or whatever. And this is when I was young, you know, younger, and uh, eyes wide open, right? First year in Pro Bowl, one of the first years, and uh, they used to just go at it, but like they used to do it in a joking manner. And he would, the, my friend, the clubhouse would always make fun of Bradley's weight. <laughs> and Bradley would go, and it was the same thing. It was like, it was like this happened three times, three times a week. And Brad, Bradley would go, oh, you, you have to use the weight card. And the, my friend always. would go, my friend would go, yeah, well, that's a pretty big card. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just, you know, just every, every week, every week three to at least three days a week and then on a homestand it was like they would just bust on each other every day yeah 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 i think i'll, I'll share one story that's uh you know I, i'm not gonna say it's r-rated but it's kind of gross rated so we had this Uh-oh. was uh we had a guy when, when on on our on our team that uh he would he would when you check into the hotel and you get Get your rooms and you get we had one guy that could sneak into a hotel ho- someone's hotel room and uh deposit something in the toilet yeah oh wow. and you'd have no idea and yeah. you'd, you'd have no idea but you'd be sitting there having a conversation 
and you're unpacking and then you go into the bathroom to get your toiletries out and there's Mr. Hanky is, you know, in the toilet and you're like, yeah. oh, he got me again, like Newman. Yeah, right, and, right. And so, you know, finally, it's like we, we kind of knew who it was, right? It was the senior, you know, prankster, like we knew who it was. And it was like five road trips in and he only did it to us because we were the we were the freshmen. Right. We were the young guys. So I hope he's listening to this, by the way. We still talk quite often. He's uh, he's still in baseball. Anyway, so does he work so, for a pro team? Is he in? Is he? He does. OK. Yeah. All right. We'll just leave it at that. Though. We'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. So he it's not him. It's not the guy. It's not PJ. It's not the, not the guy with the Yankees. Right. Uh, the hitting coach. But this was before that. So so we roll in and, uh, you know, finally we're like, we got to put a stop to this. This is this has had enough. Like, you know what? We still got like four or five road trips left. I, I can't handle this. So so sure enough, there's a there's a uh, jack in a box. Mm-hmm. you know right right restaurant yeah so yeah. right and we you, we ate really well back then you know here's your 20 dollars a meal money go go load up on jumbo jacks chicken yeah. sandwiches so this after there, peanut butter and jelly on white bread and bananas peanut butter, peanut butter. oh no there's a college so we we lived large yeah we got we got more money in college than right. pro ball so yeah so we we get you know whatever we get our food and drink and then it was like i, I got an idea so what we did was we took mr hanky and we 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 put Mr. Our, our own Mr. Hanky. We put him. For those of you that don't know who Mr. Hanky is, watch South Park. Yeah. Google Mr. Hanky South Park. It's hilarious. Anyway, <laughs> so we so number number two goes in a big jumbo jack. You know, extra large drink, straw, plastic lid, and then we just roll into their room. What's up, guys? You playing some cards tonight? No, no cards yeah. tonight. You don't want the freshmen to hang out. Yeah. So we just, you know, nonchalantly put the cup of Jumbo Jack hanky behind the curtains, like next to the windowsill in the air conditioner so nobody could see it. Yeah. Their room stunk the entire weekend and they had no <laughs> idea why. <laughs> but that's the kind of creativity that it takes to live on the road. Did you ever put any icy hot in anybody's like shorts or anything like that? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, we never did any of that. Maybe no. some upper deckers. I don't know something with feces and and oh, and God. athlete athletes and and uh, athletes and, I, and shit. <laughs> yeah, we had one guy uh, when I was in spring training. Uh, this guy had pitched in the big leagues for a long time. Uh, I gotta see how I can do this. Um, anyway, he was a big league pitcher, and when we were in spring training, I was older, right? So I was done with college. He was really young, like seventeen. Yeah. And I don't know why they stuck him with me and two other college guys. So there was four of us and then, or three of us. And then we had, uh, I can actually say his name cause he changed it. Uh, Johan, right. Mm-hmm. Who is awesome. Like he was such, and he was this little stick 150 pound dude that threw like 90 miles an hour and everybody lit him up. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, he throws 90, like that's nothing. And then four years later, he's in the big leagues and we're out of jobs. Right. So he, he was af- afraid of the dark. Really? And, yeah, he was afraid of the dark. And so when the sun would go down, we would turn all the lights on, you know, in, in his room. He wouldn't sleep in his room, but in like the TV room. And he would wrap himself up like a mummy. It was the funniest thing. He looked like E.T. You know when E.T. has the, like the hood on and all you see is his, like you couldn't see anything except his face. Yeah, and then we would leave the light on, and then he would fall asleep, and then we'd go, we turn the light off at like two in the morning for him. Oh, and it my was, God. It, yeah, it was, it was really sad because it was like the first night, you know, we all meet, and I mean, this poor kid, like, didn't speak much English. Yeah, he's afraid of the dark. He's in this weird country, you know, yeah. and he's got these three, you know, old white dudes that are, you know, I don't know what we're doing, playing PlayStation or something stupid, playing yeah. cards, and. uh and he just wanted to go to bed. I'll never forget that. He just wanted to go to bed. Anyway, and then, like, I don't remember, four years later, all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my God. That was the guy we, we used to have to turn the light off for. But, again, part of part of your family, right? You know, yeah. he was an angel. You know, he was a, he was a California or whatever. We had Anaheim angels at that time. Yeah. And he was, like, one of us. And we were, like, we need, you know, that's our guy. We're going to take care of him. Even though we weren't yeah. going to – split camp and be on the same team he was mm-hmm. he was our guy and um 
again, that there's so many life lessons that you can learn from, from, from playing some kind of athletics, even if it's, you know, junior high football, you yeah. know, or junior high basketball, it's, you know, get in there and, 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 and spend time with other people and get to know them. And, uh, you know, when you can put on the, put on the, the pads or put on the cleats mm-hmm. and be able to go to war with, with those people, you always share the kind of that common bond. And it's something you can always circle back to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always, uh, every year I, when I enter a clubhouse, I always, I, I hate to use the word ego, but I always bury the ego and I always look past somebody's perceived flaws Mm -hmm. so in other words i'm there always to help any player who needs it uh under my assigned role of course i don't ever overstep where i'm not supposed to um and i get i want to get to know that player personally and i want to try to see the good i never i had to have never really seen the bad in or been presented that way but some players are more open than others and more i guess receptive than others Mm -hmm. and i've always prided myself on on finding that one thing that one commonality that i could have with that player that we can use as a thread you know going forward and to make them more comfortable in that in the clubhouse in that environment you know uh, you know me more because players let's face it you were the same probably the same way you don't always trust those you know front office members so to speak right you know so yeah you're just you're, you know, you're very expendable, right? Yeah. Time. And so that's why the, I wanted, wanted to always, and still do want to be that bridge. And, you know, that's why it's uh, to me, one of the top priorities is always finding a way to get along with everybody. You don't have to always be friends with everybody or have any, have much in common with, have things in common with everybody. But I do always try to, you know, find that one common commonality common denominator where we could you know get along for six months out of the year and maybe who knows right. build a build a relationship because all players are different personalities you know this are all different it's just the way oh. it is yeah. it is the way it is yeah we I, I remember one of the my favorite days of pro ball was our one i think it was our only off day it was yeah. our only off day at home i think like we, yeah. we weren't on the road or on a bus or something and we went out and it was, you know, right behind our awesome stadium was just open land. Right? Yeah. So a couple of guys <laughs> went out and bought, they bought some semi-automatic weapons. Okay. Seems like the right, seems like the right thing to do. Right. Mm-hmm. So I had grown up on, I knew how to shoot. Right. So, you know, these guys, they bought the guns. I'm like, all right, let's go out. We'll set up some cans or some bottles or something. Yeah. We'll just go. So we go out there. I found this picture. I didn't even know we, we had a camera, but, it was uh, me, and it was staged. It was staged. Like, there was no there was no bullet in the chamber. There was no bullet in the gun. But I'm holding a, uh, like, a 40 of some kind on my head, and then Bobby Jenks has a semi-assault rifle, like, trying to shoot it off my head. That's what it looks like, and somebody took a picture of it. Mm-hmm. Well, what people don't know is Bobby Jenks was the craziest son of a gun I had ever played with. He had these giant, he was just like, he was like a big kid. And he was, he was only like 18 or 19. And his hands were like bowling balls. They weren't gigantic, but they hurt. And he would just like come give you a hug or like slap you on the shoulder. And it was like, that's going to be leave a bruise. Like he was just, (laughs) everything was heavy, heavy hands. You know, he threw like 96 miles an hour already at that age. And he used to hit. I mean, he'd hit three or four guys a game. He'd only throw a couple innings. He'd hit three or four guys. We'd get in some kind of brawl because he'd be like, oh, you know, and then he'd hit the <laughs> next guy in like the head, you know, but he didn't yeah. mean to. Yeah. And then he would taunt, you know, people and whatever. And, and, and But I'll never forget that picture. It was like, what was I thinking? Yeah. Like, did somebody actually check that? You know, when I, when I found that picture a, a while, like, you know, years later, right? Like 10 or 12 years later, I was like, that was not a smart idea with Mm -hmm. with with old bobby jenks but that dude was fun that guy yeah that guy brought it didn't matter who you were he was like if you i mean i was four years older than him right and and there were guys and he didn't care he loved everyone he was like the greatest clubhouse guy that would you know he probably fought everyone on the team too at some point and then gave him a hug after just kind of one of those guys and um 
I don't know. That's kind of funny. I ended up being a World Series champ. That was really cool for me to to see him close out the World Series, you know, with yeah. the White Sox. I don't know what year that was. Uh, 2005. Really quick. Yeah. Um, did you, do you have any good fight stories in the club? I know you weren't involved in any, but do you have any good, like real good, either verbal or like, you know, physical fights that, you know, you can kind of, you, or that are appropriate that you can t- talk about or, or do you just not really remember? Uh, I re- I don't remember fighting ourselves. Okay. Okay. Like I don't, I don't have any of those. I remember, you know, we had, you know, stuff in, in the minor leagues um because that's just kind of what you did in the minor leagues because you couldn't do it in college um you know the 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 main fight story is is my dad and reggie that that one is the that's like the the gold standard for any clubhouse fight i think so i urge you to go on google and google uh the time mike epstein beat up reggie jackson (laughs) i think we talked about that i mean it was i i knew the story when i was a kid oh yeah we got because my dad was always, they were always talked. They were, oh, that's Reggie Jackson, you know. He and my dad would talk. He'd be like, hey, Mike, you see, because my dad was a, you know, a hunting guide and the hunter is like, Mike, I got a couple rifles, you know. I, I got into shooting and stuff in the offseason. Oh, that's great, Reggie. Like they knew each other, they were cordial and talked. And then people would say, oh, yeah, Ray, but your dad beat the shit out of Reggie, you know. And, and, and so my dad said, yeah, we had a disagreement, you know, it was stupid and blah, blah, blah. And then the real story went out, and I don't know what newspaper it was in or what sports it was. I don't know what it was, but yeah. it came out, and they interviewed all the A's guys that were in the clubhouse. And I was like, "Damn, I almost had to grow up with a daddy in prison." Wow, <laughs> that bad? Huh? Yeah, yeah, like he almost killed him. Oh like I'm trying to think who it was had to rip my dad, like had to choke my dad out pretty much to get him off of Reggie. Do you remember what so it was about? It was, yeah, I know exactly what it was about. Can you so, share or no? If you don't, no, I if, okay. Oh, I was yeah. gonna say if you can, that's fine. well. It, it's in the art. It's in the article too. Like it, they aired everything out. So yeah. anyway, I don't know what happened. My dad was in. Uh, they were in Texas. I actually will share the back end of this story, which is which isn't in the article. But they were in uh, Texas, I believe, playing. Um, and my dad, my dad's had family or something in town, and my dad, all Reggie would go out and meet people yeah i'll leave you some tickets you know he just with everybody like to leave tickets for everybody right so so my dad would always get red you know he'd be like hey mike you got tickets man i'd be like yeah you can have my four tickets or whatever it is so anyway my dad's I, I think it was like his uncle or something like that was in town and so my dad had the tickets left so uh you know reggie's going down the line i need some tickets i need some tickets so he goes down and he's like Mike, we, you don't need these tickets. And my dad's like, yeah, it's actually my uncle or something like that. And he's like, you know, don't, you know, no, like I need those tickets. And he's like, ah, you don't need those tickets. So he starts to cross my, the names off of the list. And I think it was Holtzman or Catfish is like, uh, Reggie, I don't think I would do that. And he's like, ah, don't worry about it. And, and then he said some kind of, um, you know, uh, anti-Jewish, uh, you know, anti-Semitic remark sure. okay. about my dad's family. And mm. my dad sprinted across the locker room, tackled him, sat on his chest and pummeled him uh, until somebody choked my dad out and got him off. <laughs> and your dad's and then, a big man, yeah. Yeah, he, and, and you know, people think Reggie was big, but like if you see pictures of my dad next to Reggie, like Red, you know, Reggie was like five ten, you know, yeah, or wow. five, five or five eleven six. But like my dad was a monster compared to pr- most players back then, you know, aside from you know whatever Hondo. So yeah. So anyway, th- th- after that, you know, he got they kind of got in trouble, and you know, and they got the managers, the manager's office, and mm. all that stuff. So uh, you know. After, after the, the brawl was over, they went into the manager's office and Dick Williams just totally laid into my dad. And they're like, you don't understand what happened and this mm-hmm. and that. And so Williams like, all right, you two. He's like, I get it. Reg, you need to, you guys need to apologize to each other, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, Charlie Finley came in the owner, you know, he found out about it and uh, he told my dad right there. He says, as soon as we're, we're done with this season, as soon as we win the world series, you're out of here. 
Mm-hmm. And sure enough, at the end of that season, my dad, uh, my dad got traded. Wow. Uh, back, back, back to the Rangers, ironically. Yeah. So a couple years after that, my dad's out of baseball. Uh, Catfish is with the Yankees. Mm-hmm. A lot of those guys that were from the A's are now on the Yankees. The Yankees are in town in Texas. My dad's one of his clients was Texas Instruments, you know, the calculator semiconductor company. Mm-hmm. So my dad's down there like, Mike, why don't you come, you know, come to the game, come hang out, have some beers with us after the game. So he's like, ah, oh, that'd be great. So and Catfish was like his best friend. So they go, they go there and, you know, my dad meets with the game, they go in the clubhouse and everybody's kind of gone, you know, everybody's, everybody's left and, and it's just Catfish and a couple other guys and they're drinking some beers and they're like, Hey Mike, check this out. So it's the same locker room. Yeah. Right, that the the fight occurred in, and Catfish goes over and they pull back a uh like a rug, yeah, and underneath the rug is like a chalk outline of where Reggie was laid out. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> somebody had painted it like a uh, like a like a like a you know whatever cause of death outline, a yeah. chalk outline. Somebody had painted it, I guess, a couple of years ago in that locker room. So he was like, "That was pretty funny. That was one of the funny. That was one of the biggest laughs he said he ever had." Does you, so I'm guessing you and your you your dad and and Reggie aren't you know? No, I yeah, yeah I don't I mean if they see each other they yeah you know, yeah hey how you doing like you know, right I mean, that was Reggie had a lot of fights with a lot of different people like sure Craig Nettles like you know those Sal Bando I yeah. mean that same year Sal laid into him um, and it really my dad said it turned the whole season around it was. Um, Late, late in the playoff run, Reg, Reggie was fast too, and mm-hmm. so there was like runners were at first and third, and that was a tying run on third. There was one out, so runners at first and third. My dad was at first. I don't know who was on third. Reggie was up, and Reggie hit kind of like a weak ground ball. This was in the last inning, like top of the ninth inning. So my dad, you know, goes into second base and like breaks it up, and the guy throws it, but it bounces like three times to the first baseman and Reggie dogged it the whole way down and oh they got God. him out. That will play would have tied the game up. They would have got an extra. Inning. So anyway, my dad was, you know, picking himself up off the grass or the dirt or whatever. And then he was getting in the club. So my dad was like the last guy back into the tunnel, into the clubhouse. And he said, when he got there, Bando, who was a fire, fiery Italian guy, right? yeah. and he was a cat. He was the captain. Sure. And Bando, who wasn't a very big guy, he had Reggie like two feet off the ground, holding him up against oh the wall. God. And they were just saying, if you ever mess with our money, because they didn't make much money. If you made the playoffs and then the World Series, it was oh, yeah. like getting a 50% raise. It was mm-hmm. huge. Mm-hmm. And he said after that, though, he was like, Reggie picked it up. He said, we, we were like a whole team. That one little squirmish, yeah. everybody kind of came together. And, and that happens a lot, I think, with teams. Yeah. Well, this has been a great episode. Great kind of reliving some stories here. This has been a lot of fun. We've gone really long here. So uh, we'll wrap this thing up. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the podcast. New episodes every Monday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. The show is available on Apple, Google, Spotify, Pandora, TuneIn Radio, the TuneIn Radio app, and our YouTube page is up and running as well. The Lab Epstein Hitting Podcast. Reach out to us on social media at Jim Tara at Epstein Hitting on both Twitter and Instagram. And, uh, Thank you for listening. And if if you have any questions, Jimbo podcast 21 at gmail.com. So good stuff this week. That was a really fun episode. It was a long one too. We usually don't go that long. It was a long one. We'll make sure that, you know, uh, next Monday we'll, uh, we'll see you right back here live. Yes. Mm -hmm. For our live recording Monday morning. Yeah. That's right. And next week, next week, our final show before the end of the year, because we're doing a best of in two weeks before we enter the new year with brand new shows. We wrap up the year with a mechanical breakdown series, and we'll be breaking down the swing of Chris Davis of the Oakland Athletics. That's Chris with a K. K K-H-R-I-S Davis, not C-H-R-I-S Davis Orioles. Right. Right. This is Chris Davis Fullerton, baby. That's right. I forgot to mention that to you. Chris Davis Fullerton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this will be a fun one to break down because he is a little different. Yes, he is. Like he he's he's got some different moves, you know. He hey, you want to step in the bucket and hit 40 jacks, here's your guy. We'll show you how (laughs) we'll show you how he gets it done. 
We will do that. In fact, next Monday, the 21st, when the episode will be released, when we do it live. Live on uh, the, yeah, the 21st. That's right. Uh, it's his birthday that day. So we'll be breaking down his swing on his birthday. He'll be 33 years old, if you can believe that. I mean, how coincidental is that, that we were going to do a, a a breakdown of his swing and it's actually his birthday. That's amazing. Amazing how that how that works, isn't it? Doesn't it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> good stuff this week reach out we'd love to hear from you we'll talk to you next week take care